Welcome back to Athletes Pursuit. I'm your host, Joe Redonis, and I'm thrilled to be back here starting the podcast up again. And we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to dive into this year. Um, let me just start right here. We're, this is the first episode, so I want to give you guys some context on what the show is all about, what the mission of it. I'm very passionate about what we're going to be getting into with these conversations just because of how much training has changed my life. It's been a huge pillar of my life for as long as I can remember. It's why I got into coaching. I truly love what I get to do on a daily basis. So let's dive in right there. Uh, we'll get right to the point today, talking about some context about where I come from in the lens in which I see kind of training through and just life in general. Um, so from the beginning, I'm a strength coach, a strength and conditioning coach based in New York City. And I'm currently a coach for the Intelligent Home Gym Tonal, where we do our filming um, for programs, classes here in Manhattan. Prior to that, however, I used to work in healthcare. So my career actually started more in corporate, working for a big Fortune 20 company. I worked in uh, finance, FP&A, financial planning and analysis, product management, worked in sales, nuclear medicine for a period of time. So I tell you that because for about 10 years of my life, I worked in corporate America. And in that phase of my life, training was very different to me. It represented something totally different. And it got me to where I am today by following the things that I really love to do. But I can tell you, and we're going to dive into this, I did not know what I was doing at the time. I was lost and I was trying to figure out, you know, how to just better my life, how to improve my life and, and improve my health, improve my energy levels. So the things that I learned and viewed while working in healthcare play a huge role in how I view training and how I really connect to the people that I'm working with, who I'm coaching, because I was going through everything that you all are going through. Um, what you were looking to figure out, the information that you were trying to sort through to get some clarity in this space so that you could just take care of your of your health, whatever that means to you. I was going through that. So I have that lens, but also I have an understanding of the healthcare system itself, which led me down this path too. I was always obsessed with the question of how do I take care of my health how do I get in the best health possible to like mitigate risk so that I don't have to get into the healthcare system because it's very reactive in nature. Um, so I just didn't want to get there. I wanted to get ahead of it. Like how do I get proactive, preventative, if you will, so that I can just take care of myself. Um, so before I got into this professionally, this is what I, the, the stuff that I was really trying to figure out. I wanted to be as strong as possible I wanted to know how to lift. I wanted to enjoy what I was doing. I wanted to understand different styles so that I could train, but I could make this a big part of my life. And I could also see progress in the gym and get better over time and do it intelligently. I hate wasting time. Dude, if you know something about me, I hate wasting time. I want to get to the point. I love to work. I got a strong work ethic. I like to put my head down and get to business. I just got to trust what I'm doing. I got to, at the end of the day, trust what I am doing and then I'm all gravy. So the same goes with food. I was trying to understand, especially in my sales days, man, I was trying to understand how do I keep my energy levels high so that when I was on the road or going into meetings or staying in the office, like how can I control my food and working in an office environment I actually had a little bit more control because I knew I was in one place. So, we, you know, we had the, the office uh, kitchen where you could prepare your meals, have stuff, and you can eat in between meetings and things like that. So there was this control, but when I got into sales, I was traveling a lot. I was in my car and I'm like, how can I continue to keep my energy up? Because if I didn't eat for long periods of time, like hours, oh man, it would impact me big time. Um, so understanding all that, how to stay hydrated and then how to find a balance because I had a, I had an unhealthy relationship with food. I think as a kid, I wasn't really, didn't really get set up for success in my childhood. And I'll t <laughs> we'll talk about that, but it was a lot of donuts and bad cereal, man. Pop tarts and all that good stuff. Uh, so I didn't have the education. So I'm like, how can I find a balance with food? Same goes with the mentality in my mind, right? We're trying to figure out like, how do I calm myself? How do I like reduce stress? How can I keep my composure? How can I understand the thoughts that are going into my head? And more than anything else, how can I be proud of who I'm growing into? That's what this is really about. Training is a mechanism for growth. It is what I use and have used my entire life to make sense of the world and make sense of myself. And it was a 
a, a place to invoke change in my own life. It's, it's what I used. It's what I knew, um, to, to make changes in my life. This was my safe place. It's like a sanctuary for me, man. It is for a lot of people. So it can represent something much more than just, you know, an aesthetic reason like building muscle, which is dope by the way. I like building muscle like anybody else, but it doesn't have to be the only thing. There's much more to this. So that's where this starts for me or answering these questions. I want to be healthy, but since I'm trying to be healthy and paying attention to this, how can I elevate then the performance? I don't want to do just baseline activity. I want to master my health and I want to elevate it so that it's becoming this integral part of my life. But, and, and it's this thing that I look forward to. So here's what I learned kind of early on is when I was navigating the space, I found it hard to be consistent because and people struggle with this, man. They, they struggle with consistency. They struggle with being engaged in their activities. So I was trying to understand, you know, how do I find ways to stay consistent, to stay, you know, inspired in my training. And I always got, especially looking back, I realized like I was paying so much attention to the mental aspect of training how I'm talking to myself, how I'm growing into myself, uh, developing self-awareness, self-confidence, self-assurance, all these types of things. And just who I was growing into as a man was very reflective of where I was in my training, at least for me. So I always had this tie to growth and training. And I wanted to use it as this place to develop myself. Um, Because that's what I was doing. I, I don't know if I had, I always looked to mentors when I was early, but for the most part, I felt like I was on my own and the gym was the place to work on it. So as we go through this journey, it would kind of mold with me through my life. It would change. It would evolve throughout my entire life. And you would learn some things. I would also learn like the science behind lifting, right? If you start paying attention, you learn the strategies, you learn the sets and reps, the different things that you can put together, programs to get different outcomes while you're also doing things that you just love to do. So my take with this is, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about like the science and the art of training. I very much believe in that, finding these principles that you follow, but also keeping it fun and engaging so that you can continue to stay with it and let it be something that molds with your life. So I personally always had this emotional link to training. I would, during different phases of my life, when I was a kid, in high school, going to college, graduating, early parts of my career to in my 30s to late 30s, my training has always changed and evolved based off of where I was in that phase of my life. I'm not training the same as I did in high school or in college. I'm not even training the same way that I was five years ago. It's all very different based off of like the needs and the space that I'm in in my life. Um, I have to have this inform this emotional link to it on multiple wavelengths. On one, I just got to give a shit about how I'm training. Like there's an interest that I just follow something that I just love to do. So for example, like I would get so deep into like in college, I never, never rode a bike, like a, a real cycling bike, like a road bike, but we had this competitive cycling race and I got so invested in it. I was just interested in cycling and racing because of the community aspect that we had. We had this race at my college. We had a team together. I became the captain of this team. And I was like, all right, well, let's take this thing all the way that it can go. And I just got immersed in this environment. And that helped me in my senior year of college to get back on track and going to train consistently, which you notice, I noticed it got me really locked in with my food. I mean, I'm in college. I'm drinking like crazy. I'm not at all following healthy habits. And this helped me get in line because I cared so much about the team, about the sport, about the event that we were doing that it locked me in. And so feeling that feeling, that's what I am am looking for when I change my training and I pay attention to the spots I'm at in life. That's what helps you, helps me stay very consistent in my training. Without that, I noticed that training feels very stale to me. And I think that that's very common for people that they go in and they do things that they just think that they should be doing. Like you, you see something, you're like, all right, lifting weights is the best way. And 
yeah, bodybuilding style is the way that people are doing it to build muscle or they're just looking at outcomes. And so they go, all right, so then I need to follow this approach. But my question is, do you even enjoy that? Do you, do you like lifting weights the way a bodybuilder does? Do you like, maybe you like it more the way a CrossFitter does. Maybe you like it more the way a marathon runner does. Are you more into endurance events? See, I don't know if we're asking these questions early on to just follow interests and then let things evolve as they, as they just do, as they naturally do. So that's where I come from with this stuff. That, that helped me out tremendously. Um, but this is how, this is really how I made sense of the world and the lens that I see things through. So it's how I would develop myself. And so I'll give you some examples. Like when I wanted to do something simple, like develop more patience in myself. And we're talking about like small characteristics. I would take it to the gym. I would just pay attention to how I'm feeling you know, when I'm around people, am I getting short tempered with people? Am I getting frustrated with how things are running? Uh, and can I just teach myself a little bit of patience? Can I calm myself down just internally and in how I'm carrying myself? Same goes with composure. You know, even with your work, like, are you carrying stress from your work into the space? And can you pay attention to the energy? And can I either harness the energy and keep a relationship to it to translate it into my performance in the gym? Or can I also calm myself and separate it? and not bring it into the space, right? So can I start paying attention to that stuff, creating better focus? You know, that was a phase of my life where I'm like, am I creating, am I letting in distractions when I'm in my training? Am I checking my phone nonstop? Am I going into social media? Am I checking my emails when I'm in between sets? And what's the difference when I don't do that, when I'm fully locked in for a session, when I give myself the 45 minutes, and in my rest periods, I'm only thinking about that next set. I'm getting locked in. Does my intensity go up? Does my effort go up? Usually does. And can I control that? I just wanted to have that, that, that control, that ability to get myself honed in, creating more discipline, right? I'm like, discipline does create freedom. And I think we need things to push us and to drive us. So the gym's a great way to do that. It can be super simple. I would just say to myself, why don't we just set a time that you're going to go train every day and stick to a program that you're going to do for not just a month, but like three months for an extended period of time. And when you have these rituals set up at this time, at this location, this is what you're doing. It's already written out for you. Then you go through the ups and downs of the emotions in your training. So good day, bad day, rested, not rested, tired, frustrated, sluggish, crabby, fired up, motivated, whatever it is, you go through the flow no matter what. That teaches you something, developing more confidence. It's like, can I do something in the gym that's going to be more difficult, something that I've never done before? And not just for the day, but can I work on a skill or a new style that I can work on for months and show myself that if I continue to just practice small things, chipping away, I can develop confidence. You get receipts that way. Can I be a better leader? This is a big one for me. I've always been really interested in like leadership culture and just how you carry yourself and can affect a room and get people aligned with how you're working and how I carry myself and the energy I'm bringing into a space. And you, I think, you again, you can use that in a small way of how you're training. Do you raise other people up or do you bring them down to make yourself appear larger? There's a big distinction there. But it's also a time to work on myself, a time to think and reflect. It can be like, a period of solitude could also be a place for community building to socialize things like that. So it's meant a lot to me. Um, this is a place to like figure out life. That's how I have always seen it. it. The world's a confusing place. I went, especially when I was growing up, man, it's still confusing to me. I don't know what the hell's going on in this world, but for a long time, so for a long time, like through high school and college and even in the early parts of my career, I truly did not know what I wanted to do with my life. I actually did not understand. I felt like I had these interests, but I did not know how to turn them into anything that I would do professionally. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. I graduated school for finance, went right into corporate finance. Didn't know that it didn't mean that it was a passion. It was just logical college degree, job in that degree, stay in there. And I loved the gym, but I didn't know how to turn that into career at the time. It's like 2008. I don't know what I'm doing there. I'm like, it doesn't seem that you can make a living doing that. I truly believe that. I didn't think you could. Um, also just had insecurities that I'm navigating. 
and and all these things. But the the gym gave me a place to start to figure it out. It gave me a place to start to ask these questions because it was a form of meditation to me too. It was like a place to escape. I, like I am, I'm actually a pretty heavy introvert, I would say. Um, you know, when we talk about introvert, extrovert, it's always like the scale, like ambivert, but I definitely lean more towards the introvert side where I get overly stimulated. And especially when I was younger, I would get overly stimulated easier and I would need space by myself to just recharge and reflect on what was just happening in my day or week, whatever. The gym gave me that place to do it, to start to reflect and ask myself these questions. It also represented a constant for me. Life is crazy. And when you hear about some of like my journey in my life, like in 2017, all the way from like 08 to about 2017, I was working for one, one company, different positions, but one company. And then I all of a sudden quit my job. Like my father passed away. My grandfather passed away. It it caused me to rethink so many different things. And I was like, I'm just going to go after some stuff I wanted. But in that pursuit of just, I quit my job, moving to Africa and I wanted to follow my heart and my passions. This was an unknown for me, man. I had no structure. I had no idea what I was doing. I was, it was, it was crazy, a crazy time. The gym was always there. So I have this stuff where I feel like I'm standing on uneven, unstable ground, but I would be able to go and move. So you know, I'm in Africa. I don't have friends there yet. I don't know anybody is a, a different country. I've never even been to, and I'm living here now for six months. And as I'm finding my footing, you know, if I had these periods of idle time, well, I would go for a run. I would, you know, take in the environment. I would get to know the city. I would go to visit different gyms in Cape town and I would talk to the owners and I would start to understand. I would start to meet people. You build community that way. So it was always a place where I could go to just create something when I felt like I had nothing. And it allowed me to like explore different things and areas in life using training as a filter. And so here's what I mean by that. Things like meditation, which is like getting to know the inner workings of your mind, creating a calmness in yourself so you can really get to know yourself in a very deep and real way, right? Like calming the noises, getting a relationship to yourself I had to go deep there. I went deep in, into meditation in Cape Town. I had never done it, but I'm, I'm kind of, I'm the guy that really needs to immerse myself in an activity. So I would go to this yoga studio, um, very true to the practice and to the craft. And I went there for months consistently. And you got to keep in mind before that, I was just lifting weights or running. I knew nothing about this side of, of things. So I'm exploring meditation, but I stuck with it. I just get immersed in it. Same with like performance training. I never really dove in fully where I'm like, I'm going to do this for, I'm not talking about like a month guys. I'm talking about several months, if not several years. Like I was doing performance training, never really done it in a very organized fashion. And I was like, I'm doing this for three, four years now. Right. So I really got to know it. Same with cycling that I mentioned earlier and then bodybuilding style training. This is a new thing for me that I just got really into um, just a natural pull. I wanted to understand it. It was a different style. It kept me really engaged with training. So I get fixated and really just into understanding these disciplines. And while I do that, it's allowing me to explore different parts of myself. I get, cause you, you realize and you meet yourself in different ways with all these different challenges. When you're slowing down, you see a different side of you. When I'm in high impact performance training and stuff is difficult, you see a different side of you. Cause that type of training is, whew, it is demanding it pulls something out of you where you really meet a different side of yourself, man, versus just doing activities that you're already good at, but you do some things that are just very tough where you will fail, you will fall on your face, you will feel like garbage some days, or like it is just demanding um, versus long endurance runs like cycling, running. That's a very different feeling too. You have different mental battles in that place. So I love doing that because especially as a coach, it has allowed me to really understand what it takes. Like I like diving in so that I can feel it myself for a long period of time. And then I feel like I can tap into not just the programming side of what it takes, you know, from the curriculum or like the sets and reps, right? The strategy side, but also what it, what it takes from a scheduling perspective, like what it demanded from my life, what it demanded from me 
uh, in, in every area, like with uh, what time do I have to go there? How consistent do I have to be with this? How many days? What does it feel like after month one, after month two? What are the progressions feel like? How did my relationship with food change in these things? There's correlations to it all if you're paying attention. So again, you meet yourself during these types of things. So it led me down this path where as I'm using the physical aspect of things early to uncover these different parts of myself and learning myself, it led me down this path of improvement in general. I just wanted to improve myself as a human being. And what I mean by that is, you know, we tapped into the physical, but I'm like, how can I tap more into the mental? And how can I take the physical, what I'm doing in the gym, and how can I translate that into how I am in my job, how I'm showing up in the boardroom, in presentations, um, in meetings, how I'm showing up as a partner, as a friend, um, you know, as a son, as a brother, those things really matter. So I dove deep into things like stoicism and philosophy and just learning from other people that I really respected and hearing their stories so that I could shift my perspective And you also realize the things that you're struggling with mentally, when you read these types of things, like I got deep into like, you know, Marcus Aurelius, right? You've heard it before. I'm sure, I hope you've heard it before. The, uh, uh, the emperor's handbook, I think it's a must read. And I just dove into that book and you realize, you know, hearing the inner thoughts of someone like Marcus Aurelius and you say, all right, he's battling with the same type of inner thoughts and how he approached it and the perspective that he got or created for himself changes a lot of things of how you view the world. The same thing I got into Alan Watts with philosophy and getting a broader sense of the world and how we're connected to it, even spiritually, these things, you know, really open your eyes and even getting into, again, leadership culture. I'm obsessed with that type of stuff. So learning about other key areas from different industry, from different, you know, ways of living life, it all comes back to, I can learn that stuff. I want to see it. And then I can in my way, push that, what I've learned into how I'm training. It's a place for me to practice what I've been learning. Um, so this to me, if we really want to understand what athletes pursuit is about and what I'm about as a coach, why I got into this business, why I'm here, why I'm doing this, why I'm so passionate about it is because I want to step into the best version of myself. That to me is what life is about. Straight up. That's what I'm interested in. I like to constantly improve. There's a lot of things I think we can all agree. We can all be kinder. We can all be better in some facet of our lives. We can create more composure, more focus, more peace. Like I just want to create more peace in my own self so that I can do more out there. Here's another big one that I have been working through my entire life, truly, Things like imposter syndrome, creating your own blocks. I know that we all have them. We, we self-sabotage. It's the big thing. So whatever you're trying to work on, whatever project you're trying to work on, do you sabotage yourself? Do you, do you cause yourself to pause and just go, I mm, like you create the doubt. And so you never fully commit to an action to build something new or to try something new. I'm not even talking about big stuff all the time. I'm talking about small things. I've done this for myself with learning guitar. I'm like, I want to learn guitar, but I would like sabotage myself there. Um, Doing even something like this podcast, battled with it a little bit. Like, I don't know how are we going to do it, but you, you know, you, you push through a little bit. There's like these things that you can create these blocks around. I know we all relate to that. So, I have always wanted to understand how can I do my part to start to remove those or create a relationship to those, a stillness, a calmness, a peace in myself, a confidence in myself so that I can just move through life, you know, smoothly, you know, unbothered where I'm just going through and I'm like, I like this. I'm interested in this. I want to create this, right? Because that means something to me. Creation, creating, being creative, I think is, man, I think it's a huge aspect of life, like finding your art and training is my art. It's like the place where it stems from. So what is that for you? I think that's vitality in our lives, right? 
Um, so we're going to dive into several topics on the show, but it's going to be through the lens of training, nutrition, your mentality, mental strength, developing a mental strength. And we're going to do it by, look, just sharing some stories. I'm going to share my perspective on certain things that I've gone through, some things that I've learned, mistakes that I've made, all that good stuff, people that I've learned from and sharing inspiring stories from amazing people that I just ultimately just respect. And, you know, these are people that maybe you've never heard of even. I want to have people that I ultimately just respect because of how they carry themselves, the life they lead. Um, I really gather a lot of respect for people that are doing things to, how can I put it this way? Uh, Not for an audience, not for like an applause, for people that are doing it to be better for their family, to be better in their career and to provide more or to contribute more, um, not doing it to to seek validation, but like an internal source and for the people that they really love. And that's a very personal journey. And those are the type of people that I really want to tap into and share those stories with. I always have had the most respect for those types of people. And ultimately, even at a baseline, I think we can all agree that when we talk about wellness and we talk about health, which always incorporates the physical, how you're fueling yourself, the food you're eating, Um, your relationship to food, your relationship to your training and your movement um, and your mental health, they all tie just to general health and wellness. I I think we can all agree to that first and foremost. When I was in this healthcare space, I just made a vow to myself that I don't want to be in this system. I do not want to rely on a system to make me healthy. I want to take full ownership and if I'm taking full ownership and I'm trying to get myself to live just a healthy life life, then why not raise the standard that has been set for the general population and take it to a place where I'm not just doing something because I want to be healthy and checking a box, but how can I elevate it and make it fun, inspiring, pushing me so that I can evolve and grow? I do not understand stagnation. I do not understand just doing something to go through the motions. It's stale. It's uninspiring. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of breath. And we got a life to live. And this is all that we got. And I'm not trying to waste it in that space. And when it comes to health, I'm reading this book at the moment. It's called Outlive by Dr. Peter Peter Atia. And there was this quote, this is like right at the start of the book that stuck with me. It goes, there comes a point where we need to stop just pulling people out of the river, we need to go upstream and find out why they're falling in. That describes our healthcare system. That at the moment, we are just diagnosing and saying, you're sick already, now how can we treat it? Let's get ahead of it. Let's do that before we even get there. The system is the system. It's not changing anytime soon, whatever your thoughts are on that. And I know that I have strong thoughts and opinions on it, but why not take it into our own hands and do what we can to be healthy right now and then, again, elevate the performance? I think this is about doing that for your family. This is about being a leader in your own household, and maybe that translates to your career or whatever it is that you're doing um, so that you can just live a more peaceful life, something that you're very proud of. I, I don't care. It's not about outside what it looks like to other people. I'm talking about how does this feel to you? Are you creating a life that you want to live And you feel like you're growing and becoming better in that space that you're creating and you're following interests that mean something to you. That's what I'm excited to dive into on this show as we get in. Ultimately, this is a form of self-care. This is self-respect. It's self-care. It's discipline. It's putting your health as the highest priority in your life so you can experience life at a higher level. And it is about the pursuit, a relentless pursuit to improve and enjoy the pursuit at the same time. I'm a big believer that you can want to improve yourself and admit that we have shortcomings and things that we need to work on as an an individual while simultaneously loving and appreciating who you are in this moment. You can do both. There's a balance between both. We can love ourselves, appreciate ourselves, and demand more from ourselves. So if you're with me on that, that's what we're going to be diving into on this show. So that's all I got for you today. This is going to be a quick episode. I wanted to give you a taste of what we're going to be diving into. I'm very excited to go down this road with you guys. I'm going to be learning with you, right with you as we go through this. I'm going to be bringing on guests that I want to learn from. 
that I think are just have interesting stories to tell and perspectives in certain areas, but you'll always see, I'm always trying to tie this back to just how do we improve? And again, it's through the lens of training. It's through the lens of movement, you know, but at the end of the day, we find our art, we find our way to move, we find our ways to grow and let's be inspired and help each other. You know, that's what this is really about. Let's help each other do it at the same time. So uh, more episodes to, to follow a lot to discuss um, so yeah, stay tuned. This is Athletes Pursuit. Again, I'm your host, Joe Radonis. You can find me on Instagram at Joe Radonis. We'll be posting updates from there. And until next time, guys, stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see y'all.